Good morning, my name is Shelley. I'm the priest at St. Martin's Anglican Church in Pickering, Ontario, and we welcome you to morning prayer. Let us pray. Lord, open our lips, and our Lord, mouth shall, shall proclaim, proclaim your praise. praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, Lord make, make haste, haste to help us. us. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O come, let us worship. The Invitatory. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. The Lord is our refuge and strength. O oh, come, let us worship. And now for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pithom and Ramesses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra and the other Hua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, 
Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Now, Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when our enemies attacked us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. During my time off this summer, I was able to rest and to reflect. One of the ideas that I have been reflecting on is the question of identity. I think about how identity is such an important part of our present existence. Identity, how we identify, or how we are identified can either bring people together or keep them apart. Identity functions as a way to help people understand the world in relation to themselves and to others. Of course, this was no different in the ancient world. Identity played a large part in political and cultural associations, 
during encounters, and in relationships. As we see in our scriptures, genealogies are interwoven and take up a good portion of the scripture text themselves. And this is because the, the genealogies also served as a way of preserving the history and providing a sense of belonging. At this juncture in the ancient world, the question of who are you would prompt an explanation of where you and your family lived and where you could be placed in, so in society. It wasn't a perfect system, but it is what seemed to work at the time. When we get to our scriptures for today, we again see a discourse that Jesus has with Peter and his other disciples. Jesus asks his disciples who they think he is. His disciples give a variety of answers. Yet, when Jesus asks Peter who he is, Peter responds that Jesus is the Messiah, the promised one. And indeed, Jesus states that Peter would only know this from God and through faith and belief. Jesus then tells Peter that he will build his church on him. And Jesus finishes this dialogue by telling his disciples not to tell anyone what he's just told them. In this short discourse, there is a lot for us to unpack and examine. We see Jesus asking his disciples who they think he is. They identify Jesus in relation to people that already lived and existed. Indeed, the disciples based their understanding of Jesus on those prophets of God who they had evidence of. Peter, however, gave an answer that was based on his lived experience with Jesus. Through the time he spent with Jesus and listening to what Jesus was saying, Peter was able to recognize and name Jesus for exactly who Jesus is. This is remarkable because Peter articulates that Jesus is the living God, the God who has a relationship with humanity and is known. What's interesting is that Peter heard the answers that the other, other disciples gave, yet he gave his own answer when he was asked by Jesus. He formed his own understanding through spending time learning about Jesus and from Jesus. Jesus then gives a declaration about Peter and the church, that the church will be a community and they will be rooted in Jesus as the Messiah. People will be involved with the church and with sharing the good news of God's kingdom with all. God's grace is so much that people, ordinary people like Peter, are who God uses in order to build and empower the church. We see that Jesus gives the authority to Peter to build his universal church where all can be welcomed if they choose to be. I remember in my own life the times that I have often struggled with my own identity. As an immigrant to Canada who moved here when I was quite young, I often felt caught between two worlds. It took me a very long time to get to a place where I could confidently articulate who I am as a person. And it's not always been an easy journey, but through time learning who I am and how to explain what this means, it's gotten easier for me to do. With the Apostle Peter, I wonder what he must have, be, must have thought about his interaction with Jesus in this moment. Jesus names him and names his father in the interaction. Peter was a fisherman by trade. And now Jesus is telling Peter that he will be the one whom Jesus builds his church upon. There are transitions taking place in this encounter where Peter, through following Jesus, finds out new parts about himself. Peter, through his time with Jesus, would learn and uncover new things about both himself and Jesus, and his relationship with God would change. We see this reflected in our scriptures, where Peter goes from a staunch follower to doubter, and again, to a follower of Jesus. And I share this because I want to highlight that there is continual transformation and change that happens in our faith walk. Yet, we are all counted as worthy by Jesus. Jesus knew Peter, yet Peter and the other disciples were the ones who were entrusted to be the church in the same way that we too are entrusted to be the church. And I share this because I want us to remember that even now, we have a role to play in doing the work of ministry and mission. 
At the end of the passage for today, we see Jesus tell his disciples to not tell anyone what he has revealed to them in this interaction. This seems strange at first, but when we consider the words Jesus just said about building his church, it makes sense. Through their actions, the disciples will make Jesus known. Through the way they follow Jesus' teachings and listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit, God's kingdom is proclaimed. The disciples have been told by Jesus time and time again what their mission was, which was to proclaim the good news of Jesus, to proclaim a new way of life and a new way of belonging. For the disciples, their identities become more rooted in Christ. They allow for transformation to take place as they continue on their journey with Jesus. For us, do we allow ourselves to become rooted in Christ? Are we allowing ourselves to encounter the risen Lord through the way we act and engage with others? Right now, we are just over four months away from 2021 and have been in a new normal under the pandemic for the past six months. With all of that said, how do we remain rooted in Christ and in community with others? I think it's important for us to continually look to Jesus and to look at what we are promised in the scriptures. We are told throughout scriptures how we are to treat those who are marginalized and those who are our neighbors with kindness and mercy. How we act towards others matters. Right now, in this pandemic, how we continue to manage our new reality still matters. While we are all managing with continued uncertainty and changes, let us continue to look to Jesus and stay rooted in the truth that God is always with us at all times. May we continue to identify with the disciples that found new parts of their identity as they continued with their journey. God bless you as you go forward this week. Thanks be to God. Amen. Together, let us say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we stand in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the whole people of God, that each one may be a true and faithful servant of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those drawing near to the light of faith, that the Lord will bring them to true knowledge of himself. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our families and friends, that the Lord will give them joy and satisfaction in all that they do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who are lonely, sick, hungry, persecuted, or ignored, that the Lord will comfort and sustain them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our country, that the Lord will help us to contribute to its true growth and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We pray for all who are affected by COVID-19 in any way, shape, or form, and for those who work and serve and care for others in all industries and occupations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, we are taught by your word that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.